Sim racing is essentially auto racing on your computer. If you join iRacing and you buy yourself a steering wheel and pedal set for your computer, you can go sim racing and essentially you sit at your computer, see a graphic representation of what you know, a race driver would see outside of the cockpit of his car um, in real time and you press on the pedals and turn the steering wheel and you drive your car around essentially a virtual racetrack. I've been doing these racing simulations for more than a couple of decades now. Um, the first one uh, was a racing game for Electronic Arts called Indy 500. I decided to try as much as I could with the technology of the time um, to try and you know, make something that you could kind of figure out what's it like to be a race car driver, what's it like to drive at the Indy 500. And in the mid-90s we did a, a essentially an old uh, 60s era Grand Prix title, um, Grand Prix Legends. We continued on with Papyrus to do some NASCAR titles after Grand Prix Legends. Finally, in uh, 2004, um, the parent, the Papyrus's then parent company shut them down because we lost the NASCAR license. At that point, I got connected with John Henry, um, who's the owner of the Boston Red Sox, and also a huge sim racing fan. John contacted me and said, hey, is there some, any way that I can help, you know, resurrect this thing? And we started iRacing.com. It was mostly fun for me to, in the beginning until I found out how realistic the, the car setups are. Actually, I had friends that, that I called to ask them that ran the same car that I was racing on iRacing, and, and uh, they gave me a setup to put in the car, and it actually worked. And that's when I realized, whoa, th this is like the real deal. One of the things they did from the very start was they laser scanned the racetracks. They basically sit a... Uh, set a laser scanner out on the racetrack and it, it gets a big point cloud. It, it does a 360 degree point cloud and they keep kind of moving that thing around the racetrack and around the whole circuit. Basically just build this whole track, right? And every bump, uh, every change in transition, uh, every crack in the surface, the position of every uh, barrier or, or fence line or whatever is within a thousandth of an inch due to this laser scanner. So the tracks that you're actually driving on, I think are the most realistic thing about the sim. I mean, they're just short of perfect. For me at least, it's something that's the most realistic that I can get to, to actually being out there. And to be honest, with how limited testing is and, and the, the way budgets are, as well as you guys do it, uh, there's, there's nothing out there that compares to it, and uh, it's a lot of fun at the same time. They're constantly tweaking it, making the tire model better to, to make the whole thing even closer to real life, but it's impressive. It's, it's the, the best simulator I've ever experienced. Every day I get to the racetrack, somebody will come up to me and say, I've raced against you online, great to meet you, or, you know, I, I love iRacing, I'm part of it. And uh, it's getting out there. I mean, there are thousands and thousands of users uh, every week to get on there and duke it out. It's pretty cool that you can get on your computer, connect to a race, and you're racing with uh, other racing enthusiasts and sometimes pro drivers um, from all over the world. They have a term for drivers uh, who are ridiculously fast and have been for, for years. They call them aliens. There was one guy who was consistently at the top of GPL rank, like the number one guy, and he pretty much, if somebody pushed him out, he'd be right back there in no time, and that guy was Gregor Hutu. Um, and at the time, you know, he was just a, uh, a kid in, uh, in Finland, as it turns out, and uh, he played GPL, I guess, religiously, and um, got incredibly good at it. But he's had the fastest lap of every race. He's sat on the pole of every race. Gregor Hutu takes the victory here at Road America to win his eighth race in a row, eight poles, eight wins. A lot of people for a long period of time uh, consider uh, Gregor Hutu one of the, possibly one of the greatest sim racers uh, that we know. Everybody just uh, called him an alien because they figured there's no way a human being could be that fast. 
we've always wondered what it, what, what Gregor, a guy like Gregor, could do if he were put in a real car. I think he could take all that over and transfer. I'd love to see that experiment. Well, we've always wanted to find out what the world's fastest alien could do in a real race car. Um, and the Skip Barber Racing School and Mazda teamed up with us to help us find out. Um, so we are bringing Gregor Hutu over here to drive uh, the Skip Barber car and a pro Mazda car at Road Atlanta. We've known about Gregor Hutu for a few years now. We've been following iRacing. Quite a lot of guys in the office uh, participate in iRacing. We've always wondered what it would be like to get him in a real race car. And um, after months and perhaps years of hard work and people thinking about it, it finally happened today. I'm here thanks to iRacing.com, which I've been using for, uh, for a few years. And uh, I've been doing quite well there. Um, so they decided to give me a chance to try out the real race car. Well, Gregor Hutu makes the perfect test case because not only has he never driven a race car, but he doesn't even have a driver's license. So we'll see how this works out. Uh, started off with four cars at Thompson Speedway way back uh, uh, 35 years ago. Uh, crashed every car he had the first day and, uh, and decided we would change the curriculum. So over the years, we actually have evolved into the world's largest racing school. We literally cover the gamut. We are a one-stop shop for all driving education. Gregor's one of the uh, students in my three-day racing school that we're doing uh, this weekend. So first time here at Road Atlanta, first time actually in a real car for him. Uh, I know he's got a ton of time uh, on a simulator, plenty of experience. He told me that he'd done plenty of laps. Uh, in a Skip Barber car at Road Atlanta before he'd come here. It's refreshing to be able to come from iRacing and hop in this race car and do the stellar job he's doing. The boys say he is doing an awesome job. When you go on a, out on a track, the very first thing you should do is pick up where each one of This experience, I mean, uh, it's about fun and the experience itself and uh, not thinking of any kind of racing career. I'm just here to have fun and see the differences between the sim and uh, real car. All the fundamentals are there, uh, but you don't really get the sensation or the car feel uh, from a simulator, and that's what he's learning here. Uh, a lot of the stuff that you can learn on the simulator uh, applies here, but not everything. Remember that first lap, let's take it slow, let's get some temp in the brakes, let's get some temp in the tires. Uh, and then gradually move forward a little bit every lap after that, okay? Any questions? Good? Start them up. brake in the braking zone yeah. and you had too much brake for the amount of steering input you had and it actually locked up the uh, locked yeah, up the rears a little bit uh, at the apex time. yeah and next time through you you cooled it down on your own I'm sure you'd notice it I just wanted to point it out so otherwise yeah otherwise good okay. otherwise good through through. well yeah the noise and the vibration uh, it was a bit more than I expected. The track, you know, it's pretty much identical, except maybe a couple of curbs. I wasn't going fast enough to really tell the difference between the cars, but you know, I think the real car is a bit more stable than in the sim. I wasn't doing it uh, perfectly, but uh, not too hard. Uh, I was a bit surprised about that. He's quiet, but friendly. I don't talk much. Uh, I'm I'm pretty shy. He's very focused, um, and he never lets his emotions get the best of him. I know that he works on computers in the daytime and helps his dad with his uh, fish catch in the evening. He's a really humble guy, um, quiet, almost Kimmy-like, um, but he's got a sense of humor as well. And, um, 
on track. He, he's a hard and fair racer, like, like a lot of the other guys, but he's, he's got a bit of an edge at the moment. And yeah, he's, he's a great guy. There's nothing showy about the guy. He's very straight down the line. He's not here to be a superstar. He's here because he loves cars and racing. Here's a guy who lives 200 miles south of the Arctic Circle. He's been out of Finland one time. He'd never been on an airplane until he got on a, on a plane to fly here to uh, Atlanta. And he'd never sat in a race car before, a real race car. He's the best sim racer in the world. Nobody's faster on a computer. As an example of the fidelity that we that we have in the simulation, I mean, Gregor's coming over, he's gonna drive at Road Atlanta, which uh, we have in the sim. And uh, so he's had hours and hours of practice. He knows Road Atlanta, he knows what line to drive, where he needs to brake and turn. I know the Star Master, uh, it's a really fast car. Um, so that's going to, again, be a lot different than, than the Skip Barber car here. It's pretty unique for, uh, for us. I mean, uh, I've never experienced this before. I guess working with a driver that's really this green to, to actual driving of a physical race car in person, you know, in, in real life. As you, as you put more load on it with the arrow and the speed, it's going to become a lot firmer. Yeah. Um, like I said, it's going to be a matter of adapting to the car yeah. and kind of zoning in on, on making everything kind of work right. Yeah. Uh, good good job out there, first couple laps, okay? Sure. I mean, yeah. you got the first couple laps under your belt. Uh, yeah. that's, that's always the tough one. Yeah. All righty. So the first session, uh, I was impressed with how Gregor did. We've been starting off slow and working into everything so he can use more of the car as we go through the day. This car has a little bit more horsepower, a little bit more grip, and obviously more aerodynamic downforce than what he's been in before. And to learn those processes, uh, I'm sure he'll do very well, but we like to go a little bit at a time and make sure that he's able to use every bit of the car at the end of the day, not just at the beginning. Soon as soon as we got out there and we're looking looking and doing his first lap, that last corner where they, you know, you're not meant to go flat out. Immediately he was on it. I mean, you need to have kind of an instinct to feel the grip to do that kind of thing. I think he did really well. See that light blink? You know, that's a good indication of time to shift. Anything before that, or there, or anything before that's fine. Yeah. Anything beyond that, and you'll be starting to hit the limiter. Okay. out there today this is it's very hot this guy from a very cold country he had a touch of fever uh, and he still got within three seconds of the best so it's a great story uh, the fact that he was uh, <laughs> unwell in the car 
it's just part of the day, you know. I think the heat down here in Hotlanta has been a bit much for him. Uh, and he's needed to cool off a little bit, but you know, in terms of driving the car, Gregor's doing great. We do uh, just water in your suit that turns to steam when you yeah. get out there. It doesn't allow your body to cool. This will at least transmit the temperature in into you. All right? And we'll yeah. just keep swapping these out as we need. Yeah. All right, that's yours. If you got to do short stints, do short stints, you know, three laps, yeah. four laps. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. And then come in, you know, take a breather 10, 15 minutes and then go back out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, for this afternoon, I think we're going to give another go at it. Uh, we've got an ice bag to uh, keep him a little bit cool, keep his body temperature down. We're going to do two lap runs and uh, see if he can have a little bit more fun out there before we end the day. We want to end the day on a positive note. Ready, bud? I went ahead and warmed up the car so you don't have to sit in the car for too long. Yeah. Alrighty. Cool. Still got your ice bag there? Yeah. Good deal. Hopefully that helps you. I want you to have fun, okay? Yeah. So, safe on the first lap. Second lap will get a little bit better. Third lap, if you want it, will get a little better. And we'll come in and we'll chat about it, okay? So, well done. Let's go ahead and uh, get your helmet off there for a second. And we'll cool off a bit and uh, talk about that, and maybe we'll go out and do a couple more, all right? How's the shifting doing? Is it, can uh, you see the lights okay? Yeah. Everything's all right? Yeah. Just that one corner, right? That you yeah, control? yeah, I know, yeah. That's not a problem. You know, what Alan was saying is you're not going to lose much time. So, probably better to shift earlier. What happens when you're bouncing on the limiter, you're slowing down. Yeah. You know, so you're better off shifting earlier and keep going with that speed. You were flying about there. You starting to get that back corner really good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No? That's just crazy. <laughs> you, seem, you seemed as fast as some of the other guys through that on the first right-hander. Yeah. I saw there was a couple of guys spun as well in front of me, so yeah. I think you did all right, actually. Yeah. That's good. The sim racers can drive. Yeah? Can you get yeah. back in there? Yeah. Yeah? One more. Excellent. Would it be better to do three to four laps? Or do you want to come in, take a short breather, Stay in the car and go again, what's best for you? Maybe three or four laps. there in this first lap and then kind of progress from there you're looking good nice really good through six there really good a few of the laps of his I mean the first run was probably your best run yeah 86-3 yeah that 80 the, the lap you did the minute 24 run that was your best one so 124 yeah is that what I say minute 24 is that right yeah, minute 24 eight. Did a 124 lap? Yeah. Oh, cool. that's yeah. faster than I thought. Oh, really? Oh, you didn't know your lap time? Oh, yeah, minute 24.8, which was... This morning? Yeah, yeah. which was really good. Wow. I mean, within like four laps. Uh, th yeah, exactly, because that was your first run. I mean, his first run, and he's been doing the season. I mean, I think you were like three seconds off. Of... Yeah, yeah, three yeah. seconds off, which is... That's pretty good. That's really good for a guy who's never been in a race car. <laughs> I'm pretty pleased with the result and the way uh, things worked out in the end. Uh, I wasn't pushing the car that hard, but uh, I still got a pretty good feel for it. And uh, yeah, it was fun, fun to drive. He pulled out uh, 124.8 lap time on his fourth lap of the day which is kind of blown away some of the other drivers. Um, I think no one expected him to be quite so quick for a guy that has only ever raced online. He's driven old cars, nothing fast. And he's come here today and got within three seconds of guys that are very used to the cars and have been racing them for years. So we're impressed. Does Gregor Hutu have a future in racing in the physical world? How can any of us tell? I mean, 
What we wanted to see is, can a guy who's a, maybe the best sim racer in the world, does that transfer directly into driving in the physical world? And I think we've seen that it does. It's kind of the hope that it gives guys out there that maybe one day, even if they don't have the money to get into motorsport, if they're good enough online in iRacing and they show the understanding of a car and the technical ability and the technical setup of a car, that you know they could have it in. They could come and be a racing driver. We see the Formula One drivers, the Indy racing drivers, the NASCAR drivers. We all love to do that. That's the dream, isn't it? So Greg has come here and lived it today for all of them. It was a, it was a blast the whole trip um, and a big experience that I'll uh, I'll definitely uh, remember forever. Thank <laughs> you. 